Red Dead Redemption 2 follows Arthur's story as he faces a world where people like him are becoming extinct. It was the end of the Wild West era, an end of cowboys and outlaws. But what was the Wild West really like? Are the infamous stories of Jesse James and Butch Cassidy true? And just what ended the Wild West era? Life at this time was hard for the average person. The country still suffering after a four year long civil war left many people jobless. One of the main jobs available to people was cowboying and it makes sense that many cowboys were veterans of the civil war. They also included blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans and immigrants from many lands. Cowboys are an essential part to the stories told about the Wild West and in popular culture. The life of a cowboy is mixed with both myth and reality. Being a cowboy was hard and revolved around two annual roundups, spring and fall. The driving of cattle to market in the spring and then the time off in the fall which was spent in the cattle towns where they spent their hard earned money on the essentials like food, clothing, firearms, gambling, prostitution and of course drinking. I think one of the more glamorised parts of the cowboy lifestyle was the freedom that it bought, living in the wide and settled outdoors on horseback. Whilst this is something to be looked upon fondly, in reality, life on the trail was nothing like the movies portray. On the trail, cowboys were forbidden to drink alcohol. They had to be able to keep the cattle moving and in line. The cattle were prone to stampedes and straying, so it had to be watched day and night. Many workdays would often last up to 14 hours, with just 6 hours of sleep. They were paid an average of $30 to $40 a month, which is around $1,200 today. But because of the heavy physical and emotional toll, it would be unusual to see cowboys spend more than 7 years on the range. Cowboys had to be knowledgeable in many different parts of the trade, such as herding, ranching and protecting cattle. When the time came to drive the cattle to market, cowboys had to protect themselves and their herd from many different threats. These included wild animals, hostile Native Americans and of course outlaws. To protect themselves and the cattle, they use weapons which we all attribute to cowboys today and are featured in Red Dead too, such as bowie knives, lassos, bull whips, revolvers, rifles and shotguns. This life as a cowboy, whilst glamorised today in popular culture, at the time was a difficult life to live and it's no surprise that many turned themselves to a life of crime. This lifestyle gave rise to some of the most famous outlaws that we know today, one of which took part in the biggest train robbery ever seen in the United States. In Red Dead Redemption 2, you rob stagecoaches, trains, homesteads and even take part in bank heists. All of these were common crimes committed by outlaws in the old wild west. Many of the outlaws were products of the violence of the civil war, whilst others became outlaws due to the hard times they faced in the cattle industry. One of these famous outlaws, Jesse James, became an outlaw due to the outcome of the American Civil War. Born in western Missouri, Jesse and his family had strong southern sympathies. Him and his brother Frank joined pro-confederate guerrillas who operated during the civil war and were accused of committing atrocities against Union soldiers. After the war, Jesse James joined many different gangs, where he robbed banks, stagecoaches and trains across the midwest, gaining national fame and even popular sympathy despite the brutality of his crimes. One of the reasons why there was popular sympathy towards Jesse was this idea that he was a real life Robin Hood where he robbed from the rich and gave to the poor. The truth was there was no actual evidence that him or his gang shared any of their loot outside of their network. However, due to increasing pressure from law enforcement, Jesse was eventually shot, not by the law, but by a man named Robert Ford, who recruited the gang and who hoped to collect a reward on Jesse's head. Perhaps one of the most well-known icons of the Wild West, Butch Cassidy has been glamorised and taken his place in myth and legend. Born in Beaver, Utah Territory, he was the first of 13 children of English immigrants. In his youth, Cassidy led a cowboy lifestyle, working on many different ranches as a young adult. His first big crime was a bank heist, which took place in 1889. Himself, Matt Warner and two of the McCartney brothers robbed the San Miguel Bank. They stole around $21,000, which is roughly equivalent to $684,000 today. Throughout his time as an outlaw, Cassidy met many like-minded individuals, eventually forming a gang which became known as the infamous Wild Bunch. They continued to rob stagecoaches, trains and banks. The one crime which gained them notoriety throughout America was the robbery of the Union Pacific Overland Flyer Passenger Train. This resulted in a national manhunt for the Wild Bunch with even the Pinkerton National Detective Agency being hired to capture them. Cassidy fled to Argentina due to the increased pressure from law enforcement and was eventually shot dead by the Bolivian army after robbing a courier, with Butch Cassidy's biggest robbery being the bank heist which netted them $684,000 in today's money. This seems like nothing compared to what Sam Bass managed to steal. Perhaps not one of the most well-known outlaws, 
Sam Bass, born in Indiana, was involved in the biggest train robbery ever committed in the United States of America. An ex-cattle wrangler, he left because he was unhappy with the hard work and low pay. He bought a horse and raced it for several years, living on the winnings. After the horse became too old to race, Sam Bass and his friend, Joel Collins, formed the cattle drive. However, in 1876, after they drove the cattle to Nebraska, they squandered their proceeds on gambling on the gold rush town of Deadwood. Now broke, Bass and Collins turned to a life of crime robbing trains and stagecoaches. They did an irony, strike gold, robbing the Union Pacific Railroad gold train, where they stole over $60,000, which is equivalent to about $1.79 million today, the biggest train robbery ever committed in the United States. Bass continued to rob stagecoaches and trains and eventually caught the attention of the Pinkerton Agency and a special company of the Texas Rangers. A manhunt ensued. Bass managed to evade capture until a member of his gang became an informant, telling the law enforcement of Bass's movements, and so a trap was set. While scouting an area before robbery, Bass and his gang bought some tobacco at a store, where they were noticed by the deputy sheriff. A gunfight happened, eventually managing to shoot Bass. Bass escaped, but didn't travel far due to his wounds, and was found by Deputy James Milton Tucker, and dying in custody on his 27th birthday. These three popular outlaw stories were typical of what the Wild West was like in the 1800s, and not isolated to just them. However, as Arthur says in the game, by 1899, the age of outlaws and gunslingers was at an end, and it began with someone who no one expected. Now a name you have probably heard me say throughout the video, and you most probably recognise from the video games, was in some ways a pioneer in the beginning of the mobilisation of America to capture outlaws. This was the Pinkerton National Detective Agency. Now the Pinkertons didn't start off as outlaw catchers, but grew into it as towns were brought together by the desire to see these outlaws arrested. They turned to private detective agencies to get this done, one of these being the Pinkerton National Detective Agency. Founded by Alan Pinkerton, his first big success was saving the newly elected president, Abraham Lincoln, from an assassination attempt. After this, his success continued, managing to capture the Reno Brother Gang, broke up the Molly Maguire Gang of Irish terrorists, pursued Butch Cassidy to Bolivia, where Cassidy was killed by local enforcement and several other high-profile bank and train robbers. However, he never managed to capture Jesse James, who he pursued even after financial support was withdrew from him. This is due to James allegedly killing one of Pinkerton's undercover agents, and some even consider this to be his biggest failure. Towards the end of the 19th century, the Pinkerton National Detective Agency became less involved in the capture of outlaws and more involved in labour disputes. Now, as said before, this first real attempt to create a centralised company that would capture outlaws did influence the fall of the Wild West era. In his final years, Alan Pinkerton was at work on a way to organise and centralise all identification records on criminals. This is something America had not seen before and would make the life of an outlaw even harder from escaping the law. Now to put the end of the Wild West era solely at the foot of the Pinkertons and law enforcement in general would be an inaccurate statement as it was in fact a combination of factors. One of these was an environmental occurrence which would change how people lived forever. The winter of 1886-87 to 87 was extremely harsh for much of Northern America and affected the Western states more severely. The summer of 86 had been unusually hot and dry, with many fires and many water sources drying up. It wasn't until the fall that people began to see the signs that a harsh winter was coming. Birds began flying south earlier than usual. Beavers were collecting more wood, and some cattle grew thicker, shaggier coats. When the snow fell in November, people reported that it was some of the worst they had ever seen. This extreme cold killed humans and animals. The cold weather even reached the west coast, with snowfalls of 3.7 inches in San Francisco being recorded. People didn't really see the effects this cold weather had on their lives until the spring, where when people left their houses to look upon their cattle, they discovered cattle carcasses spread across the field and washed down streams. The remaining cattle were in poor health and suffered from frostbite. This led to them being sold for much less and changed the cattle industry forever. More people were protective of what cattle they had left and began moving away from open range into fencing using barbed wire and by 1890s it had become the standard on the northern plains. The increase of railroad networks as well made long cattle drives from Texas to the railheads in Kansas unnecessary. And so the end of cattle driving had come to pass. The life of a cowboy was at an end. Now this affected the Wild West massively. No longer was it an open world where cattle roamed the land freely. It became more centralised in that each town and small holdings 
fenced in their animals and looked after their animals and livelihood more carefully. This made the job of an outlaw even harder and it was only 30 years later in 1916 that America saw their last ever stagecoach robbery, a once staple crime done by outlaws. These are only two of the many reasons why the Wild West ended, and it is still up to much debate as to the cause and the year the Wild West really ended. Some say it was the industrialization of America, others say it was the ending of American Indians' territory. All we know is that the West was no longer wild, and America would never see a lawless period like that again.